Hey, Brave Co. Men, I wanna to talk to you about our Foundations of Masculinity 12-week video series that we created for the guy that wants to grow stronger as a man. If you wanna become a better leader, a better father, a better husband, have better relationships, this course is for you. And here's the thing, you get 12 incredible videos that literally walk you through step-by-step -step on how to grow. You also have homework with each one um, that is honestly pretty effective. And lastly, you get access to our private Facebook group. We're on there chatting with you guys. You can ask questions. You can connect with other men that are just like you. Go to braveco.org to check it out and you can sign up today. We live in a time where masculinity is shamed and men don't know what it means to be a man. As a pastor and counselor, I've spent the better part of my life equipping and training others. My goal with this show is to translate my hard earned experience into tools and tactics to help you become stronger as a man. This is the Brave Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Bellot. What's up, Brave Co. Men? We're back. And this week I have my good friend. His favorite one. friend. <laughs> the, the funniest and best looking friend. Yeah. Cole Zick. The one and only <laughs> Cole Zick. Cole, I'm stoked to have you here. Um, for those of you that don't know Cole Zick, he is the director of More Revolution and also he's my co-leader for right. our local men's ministry. And uh, Cole, you, you're just an incredible man. You have a great family. You're, you're a great husband. You've been married how long? 16 years. Golly, man. Our anniversary was when we were in Wyoming oh, and yeah. I had no cell phone service. Yeah, well... <laughs> Again, like you're such a great. The man. worst part is I I left that night to go call my wife about something else, and she, we I get done talking to her and she goes oh and happy anniversary. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap! <laughs> yeah, we recently went on a um, trip together. Yeah, we did a long range shooting school with about twenty four guys. And since we're on recording, I should just start by saying this. Yeah. Do it. This is very hard to say, but you were right. Ooh, was I? Yeah. Jason, you, you for years have told me, bro, you love being in the woods. You got to get out in the woods. You got to shoot a gun. You got to try hunting. I'm like, Jay, it's just really not my thing, man. Like baseball game, football game, yep. sports and resorts. That's where I like to spend my time. <laughs> You're a sports and resorts I'm guy. I'm a sports and resorts guy. And Jay was like, hey, do you want to go on this? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I told Kate, like, I don't, I don't think I've told you this part. I literally told her a few days before. I'm like, I know I should be so grateful because so many guys would want to do this yeah but i'm just really like can't we go to five baseball parks and bond over five baseball <laughs> games in a weekend and but but then like the day before i'm like okay i'm getting really excited for this and after walking away from that weekend i was like jay you're right being out in the woods was amazing we're sleeping in a tent on a yeah. cot every night there's not running water. You don't shower because you don't need to shower. Yeah. You're learning how to shoot guns, which that was an experience in and of itself that Riding I love. Riding horses. Riding horses. That was probably my favorite of all of it. And, and it was just awesome. Yeah, it's not even just a horse ride. It's it's through the wilderness yeah. of Wyoming, which is like we're at 10,000 feet elevation. And so it's crazy uphills, crazy downhills, yeah. off trails. So, um, it was amazing. Yeah. So for, if you're listening and you thought, I'm not an outdoor guy, you got to at least try it once. Jason is right. Yeah. There you go. That's the best way great. to start the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, a lot of people don't know uh, how awesome you are, Cole. So to have you on here is great. And... Um, I mean, some people might know how cool you are. But a couple of people. Yeah. My wife knows. She does. My, know. my At least my youngest of four children still thinks I'm cool. So <laughs> yeah. what more can you hope for? Hey, today we're going <laughs> to dive in and we're going to talk about the science of sex. Or no, the science of porn. Yeah. Which the two go together. They kind of do. Yeah. yeah. It's close to the same. Um, and this is something that you know a ton about, not because of how much you've watched porn, yeah. But because of your role at More Revolution. Yeah. And More Revolution is a nonprofit that's designed to build, bring content, help change the morality of our nation. So yeah. uh, we focus a lot on um, helping people understand what pornography does to their brain, um, 
We have all kinds of tools and curriculum. I say we, you guys have all oh, kinds we, of- you're a big part of it, yeah. obviously. Tools and curriculum for, for adults, young yep. people. So if you guys are going, if you're, if you're parents and you're like, man, how do I talk to my kids about porn? How do I talk to my kids about sex? Go to more revolution. We've got all kinds of content yeah, for you. Tons of content. You'll get to hear Jason and I a lot more because <laughs> it's a lot of us <laughs> and other people. And, and a lot yeah, of yeah, we have some experts on that, yeah, which some are great. great experts. We have some real in experts. addition to our our expertise, <laughs> <laughs> but which we, is basically failed parenting oh, that gosh. we use to help you know what not to do. It can be <laughs> <laughs> our personal experience. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so you know, and I think to speak to to that, just to give a little bit more of an intro. You know, I'll kind of really quickly blitz my story because that helps inform the approach that I've taken when it comes to sex and understanding it. I've never looked at porn. Caitlin, 16 years ago, she's the first woman I've ever been with. And what that did, though, is it caused me to actually have to study and research to understand why are there so many men addicted to this thing? Yeah. Why are there so many men that are willing to sabotage their life, that are willing to yeah. completely deconstruct their family for a, a, an orgasm, for a moment, for mm. an instant? And not having a sex addiction, never being addicted to an orgasm, mm. only ever experiencing sex inside of the context of my relationship with Caitlin, I actually had to do some study and some research and, yeah. and a lot of it to really understand, you know, and I'd look and see people that have completely destroyed and blown apart their life, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. And and having to, to know why. I think the beauty there is what it's done is it's allowed me to look at the information subjectively. Mm. It's given me the ability to process studies that have been done psychologically, statistics that come out, and it's allowed me to have this step, this kind of step back subjective view of porn addiction, sex addiction, and it helps me to kind of remove emotion. I don't have this emotional, shameful attachment. Yeah, I have a pretty disconnected from emotion, just able to, hey, here's the stats. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I can actually believe this. I can believe that freedom is possible because I don't have years of pain yeah. attached to it, right? And so- uh, And I have the opposite story. Yeah. My story is completely opposite. It's, uh, and most guys know this, but for those of you that haven't been listening for a long time, because they want to shut, they want to shut this podcast off. They're like, this, this Kolzik has no idea, <laughs> <laughs> totally, what it's like. But I do. So yeah, mine is ten years old, addicted to masturbation, um, get completely addicted to porn at fourteen, yeah, and have this like, this, you know, hellish two years trying to break this porn addiction, and you know, from ten to sixteen, struggle with this crazy. Uh, addiction to masturbation. Yep. And so, so many guys are stuck. Well, and that's the, that's the, that story, Jay, is what caused me to ask certain questions. Okay. So, by, for me, not becoming addicted as a child, 90% of the men you talk to found it at, as a child. Yeah. And became addicted. Didn't want to. Yeah. And then I look at my boys who, had, when we started this job, yeah. were eight, six, and four. And I look at them. They have no desire to look at pornography. No. no, they don't want an addiction. They want to play wiffle ball and go to Disney and watch the Avengers on TV, yep. right? There's zero desire for that, which is what caused me to step back and say, okay, so why would an entire demographic end up being addicted to something they did not want, they had no interest in? And that was the question I started asking when I started trying to research the science, mm -hmm. the psychology, the stats and the data behind it, how could we find an entire generation addicted to something they had no interest in? And for those guys who don't fully understand, we literally have a whole generation, I mean, uh -huh. multiple generations that are completely addicted to yep. porn. Uh, statistics show us that. Yep. And, <clears throat> and these kids are getting addicted. At, now, kids are getting introduced to porn. What, is it nine to 11 years old? Mm -hmm. Eight to 11. Eight to 11. And like you're saying, an eight-year-old child yep. is not going, man. I want this. I want to see some Nearly 70% of those exposures were accidental. So you're, you're talking a scenario where it was an advertisement that they clicked on and they didn't realize. Yeah. They accidentally typed in something. I just, it's so easy to do, right? Like yeah. I was looking for a ticket website to go to a football game two days ago. 
I type in the name of the ticket company and it takes me to a porn site. Yeah. And of course, porn's on the front, the, the very front page. Like you, you don't even have to get into the site. You see it instantly, yeah. right? So it's an accidental click. It's a neighbor. It's an older cousin. It's an older brother saying, hey, check this out. And they show him something on a screen that that kid wasn't prepared for. Uh, so it's, it's being introduced by somebody or mm -hmm. it's an accidental click. Very, very rarely is the kid at eight thinking, oh, I wonder if there's pictures of naked people yeah. that I can go watch. That's not happening. And then, you know, for a child who is introduced to it, pretty confusing. It's super confusing. Because you don't have this drive that says, oh, wow, I really want to see naked people. Mm hmm you know, you know, you don't, you don't have all the testosterone built up in your body or for a woman, you know, the, the different chemicals that are saying like, Hey, I, you know, I want to pursue a man. It, and so it's a really confusing, challenging time for these young boys. And, 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 and we live in such a crazy world today where you can access porn yeah. almost instantly. And so I think it'd be good to dive into First, let's understand what's happening yeah. inside of our brains, what's happening in our bodies yeah. when we look at porn, because I don't think that people actually really understand what's yeah, happening. Yeah, totally. Well, the, the very first thing, especially if it was an early exposure, which is, again, the large majority, mm. you what instantly takes place in the brain is a young boy now sees the opposite sex completely differently. Yeah whether that's a classmate, whether that is a teacher, uh, whether that's even a parent. It's or, like the death of innocence. It is. And what happens is it's, circum it's making our men very emotionally inept mm. because what takes place at that, ten let's, say, let's just use an exact number. Let's say a 10 year, a ten -year old yep. kid finds pornography, yep. doesn't have anybody to talk to or doesn't feel comfortable talking and starts looking at pornography repeatedly now over the next four to five years, they immediately now stop thinking, build relationship. I can have friends that are girls. I can be in a platonic relationship mm -hmm. and there's, it's, it, it instantly makes the relationship sexual. Right. So every interaction now becomes sexual. So if the moment they see kissing, it's got to be sexual. The moment they see hugging, it's got to be sexual. Now they're trying to kiss and they're trying to hug. Their motives in relationships with the opposite sex shift significantly. So fast forward this. The 10-year-old is now 28, is married to a woman that he absolutely loves. Yeah. And yet can't find himself not manipulating for sex. Because from that yeah. early age... He, he learned right away, oh man, that looks way more exciting than having a platonic relationship with a girl. I'm gonna start to do and say everything I can to get as close or over that line as possible. And now just the dynamics of the relationship and any, and, and a lot of, you talk to a lot of men that found porn really early, they'll say, yeah, I, I never saw women the same again. And it actually circumvented their ability to build emotional connection because it became all about sexual. I mean, <clears throat> talk about a complete blow to marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, when you're in a marriage and you're completely addicted to porn, but not only that, let, let's say that he's not even addicted, fully addicted to Just porn. Just using it or abusing it yeah. periodically. Yep. But how he's experienced sex. So that to me is like the secondary effect of what's mm -hmm. happening is his first experience to this is what sex is. Yep. Right. Is this woman or this man doing all kinds of abnormal sexual acts? Yeah. Because s sex inside of marriage, if you've never watched porn, is pretty freaking innocent. Yeah. Especially in the beginning. Yeah. Like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. It's totally true. And you don't have this idea that, oh, every, you know, uh, every sexual experience is going to be an orgasm. Mm -hmm. She's going to be super loud. And I, I'm not trying to be, yeah. I'm not trying to be, absolutely. you know. Her friend's going to come in the room and join. Her, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Violence is okay. Yeah. Because isn't it like, uh, how, violence, violent porn 
is a majority of the porn that kids yeah, are consuming I mean, today. It's like it depends on which study because okay. different people view a violent or aggressive differently and they rate them differently. It's anywhere between 45 to 85. I think Exodus Cry, it's a ministry or it's a, not a ministry, it's a nonprofit that focuses on this. They would yeah. they would report I think about 65% of porn is violent in nature. Interesting statistic that they put in one of their documentaries is that you'd actually have to search for 13 minutes to find nonviolent porn. On Pornhub. On Pornhub. It's violent porn is that prevalent, right? So check this out. You get married. You've been consuming porn. I mean, that's where you learned about sex. Yep. Porn, yeah. porn was your sex ed. Well, and here's the thing you have to realize. So now, so, so number one, changes the way you view women and it circumvents your ability to build emotional connection. Yeah. And so number two is the power of first mention, yes. right? Like that just took the power of first mention. No matter what you're told after that about sex, you're going to have to actively work to believe the new information because of what the first information was. And here's why. As humans... We are the most intelligent species. And so by nature here- Most of us are. Most of us, yeah, with with, with a few, with some exceptions. <laughs> uh, but you, with that you have, with any species, you have really two different types of behaviors. You have instinctive or innate, which are hardwired into the DNA. Yep. Uh, these are things that are, are primarily surround survival. And so like, like sex for dogs is instinctive. Mm -hmm. They have sex when the female is in heat. Yep. There isn't- sex outside of that. Dolphins, believe it or not, are the only other species that mate when the female's not in heat. Those dirty dolphins. Those dirty dolphins, man. So there's belief that maybe dolphins experience joy in sex too, like where they actually have the feeling that, that mm. humans get, but it's it's very, very, very different for humans. It's not tied to an instinctive behavior yeah. where we just naturally know how to do it. And we have a lot of behaviors like this as humans. That's why our babies are worthless for the first two years of their three years of their life because they're learning. They're U taking- Useless. Useless. Yeah. I mean, really they are. Yeah. If you think about a baby, it- like they can't they can't fend for themselves they can't fend for themselves they can't feed themselves they can't contribute to Which nothing else in nature is like that. nothing else in nature is like that mm -hmm. they're, they're supercharged with instinctive behaviors that cause them to catch up really quickly so they don't get left behind so yep. they can stay with the pack so they can stay with the herd humans by nature are like a because god partners with us and doesn't want us just to be purely living off of pre-programming he caused us to be learned so that we would have to experience okay. something, make a determination, and then adopt that as a belief system. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is our bodies, our brains actually are actively looking to take an experience and turn it into what I would use the, the term of second nature. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take an action. We're trying to build the muscle memory to put it into our subconscious so we can do that action without having to give it too much conscious thought. Yeah. Because it's a way more efficient way to operate. Yes. The more things that I can put into my subconscious second nature portion of my brain, the more effective and efficient I become on a daily basis. Yeah, you're not working as hard. It's not efficient to think about brushing my teeth. No. I want my brain to figure out how to subconsciously do that. Now, your brain at a young age is actively looking for those things. Yep. It's intentionally taking an experience or something that it's taught and saying, how can I repeat this enough times put it in the subconscious part of my brain and make this so it feels like an instinctive behavior. The, a human's mm -hmm. version of an, of an instinctive behavior is repeated enough times that it's now second nature. Yep. So now that's a, I mean, that's a really quick, really simple baseline of the way yep. human brain works. Now let's go back and reinsert introduction to pornography at 10 years old. Right. Power of first mention. Maybe it was a violent scene that was watched. And so that kid for the first two years just watched violent porn. Now they're 12. They've consumed violent porn for two years of some nature or aggressive porn. Yep. Without them even trying, their brain took everything they viewed, deposited it into the subconscious part of their brain to make that sexual experience second nature so without even realizing it that's where that man is going to default to and and he's going to try to act that out absolutely uh, not even okay so let's just say this guy has a conscience uh he gets married 
let's say that he's not even acting it out on his wife. Yep. It, but that's his idea of what, ple- what mm-hmm. is pleasurable. Even if he doesn't want to choke his wife or do all those crazy things, um, he has to, he has this internal struggle inside of him, right? Mm-hmm. The, these two worlds that are battling, that's like, I want to do this thing that I've seen, Yep. but it's not okay to do this thing that I've seen, or I'm yep. not sure if it's okay. And it just completely destroys. And that's the challenge is it, it's like porn completely strips the innocence away from what life should be like, what marriage yep. should be like, what connection should be like. And it gives you this other, this other uh, view, this other playing field that then you have to battle your whole entire life with trying to yep. figure out like, wait, what is healthy? What yep. is helpful? What is right? Absolutely. Even if you're not consuming it anymore, the your grip on innocence, your grip on how God designed stuff is really challenging because Absolutely. your first experiences or the majority of your experiences first and majority most yeah, likely. are really challenging. I had a, a friend of mine, um, they got married and one of the things I do a lot is I counsel couples. Yeah. I've done it for a long time. And so, um, I was helping her. She, she came in my office, uh, to talk about her marriage and they had only been married for like, uh, less than a year. And, she said, I really struggled on our honeymoon night because when we first had sex, it was like five minutes and done. Mm -hmm. And she said, I thought something was wrong with me. I thought we were going to roll around in the bed for an hour. Like that was her idea of she'd never seen anything. Her mom and sisters never really prepared her well. And so her first experience was really shocking because, and she wasn't even watching porn. She was watching Hollywood movies. Yeah. Like we all do. Right. Yep. And, and Hollywood is saying, Hey, if you, you can have sex up against a wall standing up and it's awesome. (laughs) She'll love it. Or and when you get done in the morning, there's no bad breath and yeah. they're done and they roll over. I'm like, wait a sec, you can't roll over there. There's a puddle there. You, where's your <laughs> no towel? Regret. Yeah, there's no regret. <laughs> and so for her, as innocent as she was, not educated at all, you know, at least not educated in porn at all, there's still this massive misconception. So, you know, so many marriages are struggling because so many men are struggling to even know what do women desire because their brains Absolutely. are so jacked up on porn, but that didn't happen at 28. Nope. That happened leading up. That happened at 10. Yeah. Well, and the, the, uh, the thing you said a second ago to, to pause there for even a minute with the expectations that you come in with, because what the, the conversation almost inevitably turns into in a marriage for a guy like you talked about where they've looked at violent porn. What, what most of the time happens is at first they don't try to cross that line. Right. Yeah. And because it's new, she's exciting at first. Yeah. That's one of the things is novelty is yeah. a big part of sex. Yeah. So, you know, they've tested this with mice where they'll have two mice together and the, those mice will hit it until that male is no longer interested. Yeah. And multiple times in one setting, he, he's exhausted, cannot do it. They remove the female, they add a new female. He's supercharged again. Yeah. Here we go. Ready to go. It's Boom. novelty. It's novelty. So at first in a marriage, Let's say this, let's, let's talk, you know, again, scenario, founded at 10, looked at it till 16, went to a summer camp, went to something, got free, got married at 23, was free of it for five years, maybe, or, yeah. or very sporadically. Yeah. The novelty of the wife is exciting at first, yeah. but then what'll happen is he'll go a little bit too far based on what he was preconditioned for. And she says, oh, that didn't made me uncomfortable. Okay. Sorry. Won't do that again. And we, as guys know how to test where we can go. Yeah, humans do. Even in our marriage. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So test and test until it gets to the point where the wife is no longer arousing. The wife is no longer exciting because, yeah. well, we've been doing it the same way now for a few years. And I've got this variety buffet foundation that I'm built on. And then yeah. what does the narrative become? It becomes that the wife isn't willing to be adventurous. Yeah. It becomes that she's not willing to get outside of the box. She's so boring. She's boring. And then they, they start to drift. Either she has to give in or oftentimes the man goes and finds what he needs elsewhere. Yeah. And we've both seen that story too many times. Yeah. It, and it's it's a tragedy because even, 
you take out the violence out of the porn, you know, even if you're just consuming what just mild, normal yeah. porn, uh, you're being preconditioned to so many different scenarios, yeah. so many different things that you get used to. Oh, this is what I want. This is yeah. what I need. You know, uh, I saw another study that said, you know, guys aren't, they're not watching one continual porn scene. Yeah. They're the doing variety's like a thousand clicks insane. during a session. Absolutely. So, you know, they're getting these different hits. Every 20 seconds, they can get a new hit. One of the interesting things, too, for us with dopamine, and so we haven't even got into that yet, really, but what's going on is our brain is releasing these chemicals that are causing us to, to number one, be addicted and attach. Vasopressin and oxytocin attach us to the experience. Let's talk about, let's just re, let's restart right here. Okay. I mean, not like cut the podcast, <laughs> but... Let's dive into, because yeah. we've talked enough about, let's dive into, Yeah. explain what's going on in our brains, explain yeah. the chemicals that are released. So this is really big, yeah. right? So, and I'm going to make this really easy statement and then I'll explain the science behind it. Do it. Our, our culture has taught people to chase an orgasm, not connection. Okay. We've been going after an orgasm for two generations now not connection. Yeah. So when I'm going after an orgasm, I'm trying to get to the orgasm as quick as possible, again, as efficiently as possible. The path that I think will get me there the fastest, mm -hmm. it's really just about getting off rather than getting with well, is yeah. the best way I would say it. Yeah. And w w nobody's immune to this, right? Like yep. I've never looked at porn and there's been seasons in my marriage where I'm trying to get an orgasm and get off, not, not be with my wife. And the problem with that is we would say that sex in a marriage, I mean sex, cause it should be in a marriage is not about the orgasm. Not just about it. Now I think there's times, there's seasons like, like my wife and I, man, we love to have a good quickie at lunch and we both enjoy it. And both of us are just going after the excitement of the orgasm and that feeling. But yeah. if it's, only that every time shallow it's shallow and it's taken sex and it's it's stripped it down of its real value which is to bond a couple to a point where it would be illogical that i would leave my father and mother i would cleave to my wife what the lord has brought together that i would never want yep. to have separated yep. when i make sex just an orgasm i have to condition my brain to strip it of its bonding ability oh wow and so that's what has taken place. And, and here's what that the bonding ability is, the way that the Lord wired our biology, is there, we have hundreds of neurotransmitters. These are things that release chemicals in response to situations and circumstances. Uh, you have them that work. When you, if you're a sports fan and you're at a game and your team just won on a, for baseball, they, they hit a home run and it ended the game. It's called a walk-off home run. Game's over. The excitement, your brain is releasing these transmitters that say this was, I, I can't believe I came to this game. I didn't watch it at home. Amazing. Yeah. I imagine if you hit the deer, right? Like you yep. kill the animal. If you're a hunter, like that moment is just like seen, euphoric, euphoric, yeah. right? Like our brains are meant to reward us for certain things. Yeah. In hunting, why is that the way? Is because before we had the the world that we lived in now, you needed to create a second nature biological response to providing food, so yep. you provide for your family. Otherwise, you'd just starve. You, you'd just be like, ah. Uh. Whatever. Uh, I'm not motivated. I, yeah. I'll just go pick some berries. But no, yeah. God knew we needed meat. He knew. And so I think he worked, he built that biological thing Absolutely. into us so that we would be rewarded when we provide for our family, not just watching my son eat, but also the experience of the hunt, right? Yep. Like all of those things. And, and, and every experience you have, both, and, and I use positive ones, there's also negative ones, yep. right? Where your transmitters are saying, no, run. Get out of this situation. Fear is actually not a bad thing. We say we yep. want to be fearless. Actually, I want to have some fear sometimes, yeah. <laughs> right? Like I don't, I need that at Standing times. in front of a train, I want fear to say, hey, you might want to move. Absolutely, right? And so specifically when it comes to relationship sex, pornography, the four that are at play primarily are vasopressin and oxytocin, dopamine and serotonin. And what those do, vasopressin and oxytocin are bonding agents. Mm. These are neurotransmitters that are released that cause you to feel ownership. Hmm. Okay, and that's what, when, when a 16 year old kid, let's say, who his brain doesn't fully develop for another six years, begins to have sex in high school, and that relationship falls apart, 
Well, because you don't have full development of the frontal cortex, which holds the self-control and decision-making portion of the brain, but you do have full control of your, your, your neurotransmitters are functioning just fine. Vasopressin has been released every time he's been with this girl. And now good decision-making and self-control is undeveloped. What does he do now the moment they break up? He becomes the rage, jealous, yep. angry boyfriend that can't handle the breakup. And he has, he has like chemically bonded with her. He has chemically bonded with her. Her, his brain has taken his experiences with her, put them into his subconscious, done what the brain was meant to do, and said, "This is my wife." Yep. Whether they've ever crossed the altar or not. Yep. To his biology, she's mine. She's mine. And which, that, which also sheds a ton of light. I mean, secondarily here sheds a ton of light on why it's so hard to get over a breakup. Absolutely. That's why they say you'll never forget your first because you were never supposed to forget your first. Mm. That it's so true. Yep. That that you bond significantly. Dating has never been the way that it is right now in our culture right. in the last 50 years right. where you would potentially have multiple girlfriends or boyfriends before you ever cross yep. the altar. I mean, that's never in the history of the world been the way that dating has been. Yep. And so whether you've had sex or not, you've bonded at some level. And so what happens if I bond to that person and we break up? What do I have to do? Just so I can be sane, I have to convince myself that I'll be okay. I have to convince myself that it doesn't hurt. I get to partner mm. number two, partner number three, partner number four. For men in America, the average man has six sexual partners before their wedding day. Wow. So if I, what I've done six times then is I've had to convince my emotions to shut up. Yeah. I've had to convince my bonding neurotransmitters to stop being so emotional, yeah. stop being so weak, stop being so committed. You should be able to have casual sex and not have it bother you like right. all the other men. Because if you're going to be a man in this society, you have to have lots of sex. And if you don't have lots of sex, you're not a real man. So that means you have to learn how to, to quiet in silence your emotions. And all the while, your emotions are just, I mean, it's a jackhammer. Yeah. It's a sledgehammer to your emotions. Mm -hmm. It's almost like whiplash. I love her. No, I don't. I can't say love because to love means I'm going to have to unbond. And so we're going back well, and forth. And you, and you love something or you want something that you can't have. Absolutely. So, Tough. So that's what vasopressin and oxytocin does. Then you come in and you add dopamine and serotonin. These are the happy chemicals. These are reward chemicals. These tell your brain, that was awesome. Position your life to do that as often as you can. Mm -hmm. Get like that. We've got to do that over and over. This is right now a big part of why video games have taken over. Because the other thing that dopamine and serotonin do is they have no work ethic. They have no character. They have no integrity. They just want the reward. They want that, that chemical release Give any me means hit. possible. So like video games, for instance, man, they get you there quick. Yeah. You don't, I, I have to work hard to be good on an athletic field or an athletic court. Right. I can, in just a couple games, start to do really good at video games. And then they do it on purpose. So like when I got COVID, my kids, I started playing Fortnite. I was at home for nine days. My kids are playing Fortnite. I won my first game ever. First game ever I played, I won. My boy's like, oh my gosh, dad, you're awesome. And I'm like, yeah, I am awesome. And I play a second <laughs> game and I'm doing really good. What are they doing? They're giving me the reward of victory. I found out later, do you know what they do on purpose? They match you with other players that haven't played. Right. The system knows. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get me to think I'm really, really good. They're trying to get me to th give me that dopamine release. Maybe they don't have the language to yep. say dopamine and serotonin, yep. but they're trying to give me the reward of victory with absolutely no discipline to get there. It's the pathway to addiction. It's the pathway to addiction. I got massive reward, very little discipline, no work ethic. Holy smokes. Yeah. How this do I is, get that? How do I get that? Well, that's what porn is. Porn in particular gives you a really, really powerful reward with absolutely no connection, no relationship, no work. And it gives, you could get a new reward every 20 seconds. And that's the last part of the dopamine and the serotonin that I want to say is you actually get as much of a release with the anticipation of what's next as you do with the act. Right. So that's why a new scene becomes so exciting, a new video, a new click 
because the excitement of what's about to come, if you have a dog, you'll see this. A dog just absolutely illustrates this. Mm. I will, my dog will come up to me wagging her tail. I will put my hand above her head, not touch her, and she'll wag faster. The moment I touch her head, her tail stops wagging. Mm. If you have a dog, try yeah. this. You'll see it. <clears throat> because what's happening, the anticipation of being petted and then the closeness of feeling like you're about to experience that just begins to unload. Oh, I'm about to get pet. I'm about to get pet. The moment the action happens, yep. oh, well, that's good, but it's not as good as the anticipation of, of the excitement of it being about to happen. Well, that's what porn offers. Porn offers the excitement of the unknown next. You don't know what the next video is. You have an idea, but you don't really know what's mm. going to happen, what's going to be portrayed, what's going to take place, which is in a marriage, you don't get a new scene every 20 seconds no. because it's not about the orgasm. It's about connection and connection requires intimacy. Qu connection requires nurturing. Connection requires discipline yep. and work ethic of relationship. And so that's where porn has become so damaging is it's actually teaching us chase the orgasm, chase the dopamine and the serotonin fix. You're bonding to a screen, not to a human. And so you're having to teach yourself to numb yourself to the bonding emotions that are being created. And you're able to get a variety that isn't even healthy. It's not even fair to ever expect that of our wives. Yeah. Because that's not what real human interaction is. Yeah. I mean, most, you know, you get taught to chase instant gratification, mm -hmm. right? That's the destruction of, of responsibility. It's a destruction of... Um, a man yep. <clears throat> and even a woman, you know, what a woman is, is chase, chase instant gratification. It's probably the quickest pathway to hell. Yep. Absolutely. In and, any area. Yeah. And I'm not talking literal hell. I'm simply saying a life that you hate instant gratification. Yep. Because there's no real long-term reward when we chase instant Absolutely. gratification. And so, man, so many years of not bonding to real people, so many years of suppressing your emotions, so many years of instant gratification and you wake up one day, you get sober one day, yep. long enough to go, my life feels like it has no real meaning, yep. which circles you right back into the addiction. Absolutely. It's tough. It is. Men are in a really tough place. The world's in a tough place. Well, and we've all been there in different ways, right? Yeah. Like we're talking about porn and sex, but I don't know that any of us is immune to having a season where we chased instant gratification over the long-term reward 100%. and then look back, God, I wasted that six months of my life. Yeah. I wasted that year. I wasted that five years. Wish I'd have been investing earlier. Wish I would have been investing earlier. Wish I would have worked harder in my 20s so I could have worked less hard in my 30s. Wish, yeah. right, all of those things. The question becomes, I think for us as men, how many times do we have to look back and wish we would have done the hard thing first before we learn? Yeah. Right? Like in any area of your life, it's always it's the thing that i try to teach to my kids i'm sure you try to teach to yours i try to tell my boys like guys true enjoyment's on the other side of responsibility yeah like you think you want to enjoy the couch right now you're going to want to enjoy saturday better than i'm going to have to let you enjoy it because you're not doing your wednesday yeah. chores yeah you take what you're supposed to do today and put it on the back of tomorrow when you delay yep you know, when you chase instant gratification. And so it, that, whether it's this or it's something else, I think that's a, a, something that I know I'm still trying to learn in every area of, hey, do the hard thing first. Do the hard thing now. Yeah. Go after the biggest bear on day one. Yeah. So that from there, it naturally gets easier. Not only am I more equipped for the smaller bear. Yeah. Because I've, I've slayed the big giant first. Yeah. Now the now the small giant feel feels easier. Like go at the hardest thing now. Yeah, you know I think <clears throat> a whole bunch of guys are going to be listening to this and go, okay, well, I don't want to be addicted. I don't want to have those old thoughts in my head. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to come to my marriage and have real expectations. Yeah. I want to come to my life and feel like it has meaning and purpose and yeah. because everything outside of the video game everything outside of porn everything outside of you know the quick fix feels dull yep it really does yeah and life feels a little bit boring when when you don't get that quick yep. fix uh i did this a little bit um when i i used to struggle a ton with anxiety and <clears throat> I found fly fishing, 
which is a, a kind of a funny thing, but I started fly fishing like four days a week, three, four days a week. Yeah. And all I thought about, I'd come home and I'd tie flies and then I'd go fly fishing. I'd build fly rods. I got a drift boat and my whole world, my whole life was like fishing. Yeah. And meanwhile, like I've got a wife and kids and I'm doing a decent job, you know, like I'm a, I'm not a, I'm not like leaving them out, Yeah. but I'm chasing this, this excitement to manage, yep. to manage my anxiety. Like that's, that is the, that's my medication yep. is fishing. Because when I'm out there, I'm not thinking about how much anxiety I'm carrying. When I'm out yeah. there, I'm not thinking about the pressure. I'm not thinking about anything. And everything outside of this world, outside of the fly fishing, get the bite. It's, it's the same kind of thing because I'm, yep. I'm waiting and anticipating this strike, yep. this bite the tug absolutely and as soon as i get one i want to get another one yeah and another one and another it's, one i mean you're reeling in the fish and you're already thinking about the next I bite not even the, the fish yeah. that you're reeling in it's funny because it's it's a complete addiction yeah and <clears throat> having been out of that season for a while now i'm able to look back and go eh i i'm interested to go fishing once in a while yeah but i don't really care totally but it took a long time time yep. for my normal world, mm -hmm. the real world to get its color back yeah, and to feel exciting. And so I think the, the sad thing for a lot of men right now, the, the challenging thing is how do I make my wife exciting? My marriage, exci yeah. not my wife. How do I make my marriage exciting? How do I make my life feel exciting? Mm -hmm. How do I break this addiction to porn? Yeah. Well, so there's a couple things here with that is Atomic Habits is a phenomenal book on this yeah, it topic. Really is. You know, it's they're not talking necessarily about porn and sex, but they address it. But they're teaching you again. It's it's a deep dive into the way our, our brains work. Mm -hmm. And so there's really one of two routes when you're trying to break any addiction or whatever. You know, what, what regardless yeah. of what it is, the, the fastest and quickest route is change your context. That was one of the interesting things that they found is that context can supercharge habit destruction and, and recreation. Mm. And they they use this analogy in there but with heroin back during the Vietnam War. All these vets, while they were over there, were getting addicted to heroin. Yep. And they were really concerned about how they're going to introduce them back to society. And they really didn't implement anything. But the once these men left Vietnam and got back into the U.S., the relapse rate was shockingly low. I remember this study, super low. Super low, and they couldn't understand why, and they realized heroin was only connected to the context of war, and in Vietnam, it wasn't co It wasn't connected to the context of family in the United States. Yeah. Whereas even somebody that goes to a rehab here, if they go back to their same home and their same environment, their same friends in their same town. Back in this old context. 90% of them were going back. Yeah. And so, and I think if I remember right, ninety percent is actually the stat. I have to look back and refresh it's myself. Close. On, it's close to that. It's something. It's something real, like whole, like holy smokes, high. And so, if you ideally, if you can change the context, if you have the power hmm. to change the, your context, and so scenarios that might be, get rid of your smartphone and go to a flip phone for two years. Yeah, and you're like, that's extreme everyone's going to ask me why I have a flip phone. Absolutely. But the most of us, most people that look at porn, the context is on their cell phone. You're so used to doing the same routine every day yeah. that it's just locked in your brain. You open it up, you have a hard moment, you open it up unconsciously, you yeah. scroll over, you look at it and boom, you're in it. Absolutely. And, and, and we do it, I do it in different ways. I will sit, be sitting here, not even thinking and go to ESPN.com in my phone. There's not a game I was looking for. Yep. There's not a storyline I wanted. It's true. I'm not even in season of any of the sports that I follow. Here's the thing you could do. <laughs> you could just get a completely different phone. You could switch from an iPhone to a Samsung. Yeah, that works. So I think that 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 first question is, can I change my context? Yeah. If you can change your context, that's that's going to be huge. If yeah. you're somebody that struggles with with affairs and being faithful to your wife, you might seriously want to ch change the context of your of your town, your city. Yeah. If you're if you've repeated mistakes in the same area, a change of context could be the the mm. biggest way to help supercharge. Because what it does is it almost gives a white blank page to your mental pathways. Mm. 
So your mental pathway is the actual physical part of your brain that holds the habit. Hmm. And so if you can shock your system to a change, yeah. you're going to find yourself, hey, I'm moving into an area of freedom. It could be something as simple as like, it's a period, a six month period of busyness at work. I don't, mm. I don't recommend men busy themselves with work for the sake of doing it. But if you can give yourself to something for a period of time that pulls you out of maybe that addiction, maybe pick up a new hobby. Maybe how's that? Pick up a new hobby. Yeah, you know whatever that thing is, where it's a constructive use of my time that there's also a reward on the other side of. Yeah. Right, the new hobby provides a reward. Maybe if 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 work gives me a reward of finances, whatever that thing is, yeah. that's different than that thing you've you've become accustomed to. And if you just are like, I, there's no, I can't find a way to change the context of my situation. It's not possible. Cannot do it. It's not just excuses that's preventing me from changing context. I literally can't change the context. Well, then the reality of it is you have a daily grind that you're going to have to have immense accountability, which you need accountability on either side anyways, Mm -hmm. but you got to let somebody in really deep. Mm -hmm. You got to say, hey, I'm going to let you in really deep to the, when I want to disengage. Mm -hmm. I want to disengage and I want to go after this thing. I want to go, I want to pursue this disengagement from my responsibilities, from my family, whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to commit to fish once a week instead of four times a week. Yeah. I'm going to make Saturday my fishing day. I'm going to fish every Saturday morning. I'm going to look forward to fishing every Saturday morning. But I, no matter what happens, even if I have a 10 o'clock appointment on a Thursday, I'm not going to go fish Thursday morning. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and actually yeah. set up those parameters. And, and, and you do have to, it's, it's in a sense, you're, you're detoxing, right? And, and there, there, it's the unique thing where the reality of it is all of our addictions, whether it's porn or whatever, have a deeper reason behind them. Yes. You're, it's not porn for the sake of porn. It's not even orgasm for the sake of orgasm. Even if it started that at, yeah. that at 12 years old, your brain learned really quickly, wow, an orgasm is a really good medicine for rejection. Yep. Whenever I feel rejected, I can have an orgasm and I get a break from that for a moment. So you have to figure out why am I actually doing this thing? And then you have to set up this accountability and these these things that you're willing to commit to to give yourself some parameters so that you actually then on that Thursday morning when you really want to go after this, if I'm just sitting there thinking, I gotta fish, I've gotta fish, I've gotta fish. Yeah. Sit there and ask yourself, why do I feel like yeah. I have to fish right now? Yeah. Um <clears throat> to me it's all about creating creating a complete new lifestyle that yep. you can immerse yourself in. Yeah. And because it's not going to be one thing, right? And you don't want to live in a prison either. Yep. Not for very long. No. So I see a lot of guys, they put blockers on their computer, blockers on the phone. Yep. Um, and at first that's okay. Like and those I, are great. Yeah, I think that that's Keep fun you out of the bar first. if you're an alcoholic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But you at some point, you have to be able to... Man- manage yourself. Yeah, to manage yourself, right? So it's it's... At first, you're going to do a bunch of external controls. Yep. And while you change your internal control, Mm because you have no, you don't have a lot of control inside. And so eventually that power is going to shift and you're going to, while you build up this internal fortitude. Yep. And so to me, it is, it's what you're talking about. It's a, it's the, um, dopamine detox Yep. where you are able to, you know, change your phone, change your environment, change the context. You're able to shut my phone off, whatever whatever you have to do to detox from this dopamine. Yeah. Well, and that's a good, that's a thing that's important to pause on. I think Jay is we have to realize that there will be a detox period as, as physically like our body can physically manifest that the same way an alcoholic in detox. Like you have to realize, especially if you're detoxing from porn relationship, you're going to go through a detox period where relationships almost anger you. Yeah. Like you have to give yourself room to realize I'm going to, it's going to be hard as hell because you're fighting hell. Like yeah. you're literally fighting back the gates of hell. You're going to go through a, a detox period that is so tough. That's going to cause you to question every day if it's worth it. Yeah, that's possible. It, it's a hundred percent possible. Um, but I think setting yourself up for success and going, Hey, I'm going to take, I'm going to take two months. Yep. Set aside and I'm going to detox, which basically 
you know, your brain's a neuroplastic, which we haven't talked about yet. Yep. Which means that your brain will create new pathways. Absolutely. And your brain will bond to new things. Mm -hmm. And you can create new habits and new patterns. And so although you may have a day that's hard or two days or a month that's hard, you won't have a life that's hard. Yep. And guys need to know that. That's so like, good. It's only hard in the beginning. Yep. And it's like anything, you know, at first, at first you're like, man, I don't want to, uh, running so hard. Well, after you run for a while, pretty soon you crave it. Yeah. And a good, you know, you crave the work, you crave the hard work. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, splitting wood sucks. Well, I used to think that until I loved splitting wood. Absolutely. And you, you learn to crave that reward. And so your brain guys is going to heal. So you're going to create a new neuro pathway, which means you're going to have a new whole new set of habits and a whole new set of cravings and a whole new set of yep. uh, natural aims that, that you want to, to go after. And so, um, to me it's let's detox yep. and just know this. <clears throat> if it's tough, it won't be tough forever. That's what you're telling yourself. That's it. And you're rewarding yourself by saying, I'm, I am building, uh, I'm becoming the man that I wanted to become. Yes. I'm becoming a man of conviction. I'm becoming a man of character. I'm yeah. turning the lights on. It, like I'm adding color. I'm adding detail. I'm adding value to my life. Great. That's worth sacrificing for. Yep. And then you have to pull in strong men into this process. Yep. And here's why. Not just for accountability sake, like how long have you looked at porn? When guys keep track of stuff, I'm actually not a huge fan of keeping track. Yeah. And there's lots of reasons why. I think it, it, it focuses the attention on the wrong thing. Yep. When's the last time you touched your penis? Oh, I didn't touch it. And um, I think you bring strong men in to help lend you courage. When Jesus sent out the disciples two by two, uh, sent out the disciples, he sent them out two by two. And it said, at least, they, at least one falls, he has the other to pick them up. Mm -hmm. Now, he wasn't even talking about sin. He's like, man... If you've ever gone on a hike with somebody or done anything hard, there yep. comes a point when either one of you during that week will go, ah, I'm tired, man. Yeah. Uh, you have a setback, you, you know, you're getting sore and the other person is there to remind you like, oh, bro, this, this is why we started. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's where the word encourage, I give you my courage. I'm imparting my courage to you. Yeah. And where most guys fail not on purpose where most guys fail is they attach themselves to other weak men who are struggling. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying weak men as in a, a, a slam on them. I'm saying we attach ourselves to people who aren't living in victory. Yep. And, and therefore as soon as you start to struggle, you're what you're looking at is someone who's failed as well. Yep. You're not looking at victory. You're not, you're not going, I'm with guys yep. who know how to get it done. Absolutely. Who have done this before. It's like you on that horse when when we were on our you know trip to, to the shooting school you're watching you're following a line of 10 horses yeah the leader is a guy who's an expert yep so when your horse starts to struggle up the hill you know you're gonna go up the hill if you were there by yourself or a oh, lot yeah. of guys there by themselves would be like i'm not going up that hill. Uh, i wouldn't have done it no, because when we go up these really steep hills, the horses are laboring, they're breathing hard, they're slipping, uh, they're having, they're struggling. Yeah. And you'd be like, um, this is too much. This no. is scary. This is dangerous. I'm done. Where's the helicopter? Where's the helicopter? <laughs> and there's just so many different uh, analogies that we have for, listen, you need a guide in your life. Mm -hmm. Men, you need a guide in your life. And Good friends don't always make great guides. It's true. Good friends don't always yeah. know how to get you where you need to go. You need a guide. Yeah. Your friends are there to cheer you on, impart courage to you, go on the journey with you, mm -hmm. but you need a guide. And so this to me is one of the biggest parts of like, join a group of men who have conquered and are conquering. That's it. In the area that you want to conquer, right? Yeah. Because not only are they detoxing with you or helping you to do that, but they're also giving you the tools, the principles yep. to fortify your inner man, Yeah, which is massive. Absolutely. I mean, winning is contagious. It really is. So when I'm around people who have been victorious, who win, who don't let up, who are going after the fullness of life, the natural byproduct that's going to manifest in me is the same thing. A hundred percent. 
you know, in that, that quote where they say that you become the sum total of the people you hang around. Mm -hmm. Right. And like the five people you hang around is yep. so true. Yeah. Is you're either going to get kicked out by them or you're going to get pulled up. And if you, and either way, you've got something to grow into. Yeah, it's real. And so for me, you know, this is the start to the road into, it's not just out of porn, it's into the life that you really want is the road into the life that you really want is change your context by changing your friends. Mm -hmm. That's great. By getting a guide. I love it. By getting <clears throat> on the right path. And <clears throat> this to me can change everything. And then finally, like, I think that you, like what you said, we really have to understand ourselves. Yeah. And understand what's driving us. Yep. Because at first when you're really innocent, when you're 10, you know, the first, the first orgasm I ever had wasn't because I wanted to. It wasn't because you had dealt with rejection or hurt. No. It just was, whoa. I can literally remember it. It was yeah. in a hot tub. Wow. It was like a, a jet, hot tub jet. Like it was so innocent. I literally was like, oh wow, that feels good. Holy smokes, that's about to feel really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then that was like, wow, that was an experience I wasn't ready for. And <clears throat> yeah. that, but that turned into my solution mm -hmm. for frustration. That turned into my solution for disappointment. Yeah. That was my solution for insecurity. Mm -hmm. That was my solution for loneliness, my solution for boredom, yep. my solution for whatever. Wanted to feel more exciting, excitement. And we have to stop and understand the driver yep. behind our lives. Absolutely. Because you can, you can turn the porn off. You can, you know, have new friends. You can get a new phone. But, but if, if you don't you figure don't, out the root, if you don't understand, okay, it's like this. If you don't understand how to deal with your triggers mm -hmm. in life, how to deal with your frustration, how to deal with your shame, how to deal with your pain, how to process your emotions, which guys are like, oh my gosh, I have to do all that work. Well, you get to, it's about creating yeah. again, a life that you're proud of. Yeah. And uh, in every life guys, every single one of us deals with pain on a regular basis. I deal with pain on a regular basis. Yeah. Disappointment, frustration. My wife doesn't say yes. Every time I ask what if we can have sex, what? Yeah, I mean, maybe yours says, <laughs> but uh, I could call her and ask her and she would tell me the truth. Well, and can I give a practical thing on Please that? Please do. Because I think one of the things that we can do is you actually, next time you're feeling just the, I've got to look the at urge, porn, yeah. the urge, s grab out a pad and l take an assessment of your last 48 hours. Mm. What are the things that just happened? Your highs and your lows. What are your highs and your lows? What yeah. are the things that happened that you loved? What are the things that happened that were hard? Yep. Maybe you just worked two 16 hour days in a row and you're exhausted and you're just yep. right, exhausted. Because what that's gonna do, taking an assessment of the, the hours and the couple days leading up, is it's gonna help you identify what are my triggers that cause me to wanna go back to this. That's gonna tell you what your subconscious brain thinks porn can do for you. Yeah. Your brain's going to say, oh, look at orgasm. I need an orgasm. Why do I need an orgasm? Oh, I got, I really screwed up at work yesterday. They wrote me up and they said, if I do it again, I'm fired. So I'm facing rejection. I'm facing lack of finances, provision, this, this concern that I'm not going to have enough. Write all those emotions down. Well, now you know, hey, these could be the triggers that cause me to go after yep. porn. So now while you sit there, let's say you got four things on the list that have went wrong. Dive into the word of God. All right, where's where's the answer in the Bible for this situation? Father, and take a minute, pray. I'll if and you'll I think you'll find that if you'll go after actually giving these things to the Lord, not we're not trying we're not even yet trying to avoid looking at porn. Right mm -hmm. now we're just trying to identify how's my heart? Mm -hmm. Why is my heart where it's at? Mm -hmm. And how can I give these things to God? I think you'll find that at the end of that, even if, if let's say that takes 15 minutes where you just pray through them and then you feel really good about them, you feel like there's been resolution, I think you'll realize, oh, and I don't want to look at porn right now either. Yeah. I just identified my problems, my hurts, took them to the Lord, found some solutions on my own. I didn't realize how easy it was to find a solution if I take it to Him. Yeah, here's the other thing too, is <clears throat> I think that connecting with God is massive 
and and then taking it to the next level, which is you got to talk this out. You got to learn how to communicate. Yeah. Right. You got to learn how to dialogue about it. Get with your guys. Yeah. And have a real conversation Huge. because we've been taught again. Think about your what you learned. You learn to shove your emotions aside. Mm-hmm. You learn to not validate them. To mute them. Yep. To mute them. And some people are only going to God. Yep. So so that's part of why that's part of why men are in this struggle because they don't ever have the accountability with another man. They don't yep. want to show another man their weakness. Yeah. And listen, guys, God isn't enough for you. Oh no! Everyone wants to shut <gasps> it off now. Adam and Eve. Ad, sorry, Adam's in the garden. He's walking with God, hand in hand. Yeah. Every day he's walking Every with God day. and God goes, you know, I've given you all these animals. I've given you this land, I'm giving you power, control, purpose, and you're missing something. Still missing something. You, you are missing this, this connection yeah. that you need. And, and so, you know, God is absolutely our source yep. for direction, protection, comfort, uh, love, unconditional love. He's our source for identity. You know, you, you have to have that as a foundation. And then you have your brothers and you have, you know, your family that's beside you. What ultimately ended mm, the nail in the coffin for me in, in my addiction struggle with masturbation and porn, both. I, I, I dealt with them both at the same time. Yeah. I'm 16 years old. Actually, I think I'm 15 years old just like in tons of pain. I've been talking through this with my dad for a year. And finally one night I was talking to him and he said, Hey, what do you think about telling the family? Which basically means tell my older sisters and my mom Yeah, that I'm struggling, you know, ha- with watching naked women. <laughs> what do you think about not doing that dad? With How, orgasming, what do you think about no way? <laughs> orgasming to naked women, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm about to go tell them totally. in, in my mind. I'm not trying to be dirty. Yeah, Literally. That's absolutely. what I'm thinking. So I said, you know, dad, do you think, do you think it'll help? And he said, I know it will. So I can still remember, of course, to this day. Yeah. I remember my dad is sitting next to me. My sisters are sitting out in front of me and I told them, I just looked him in the eyes and I said, I've really been struggling for the past year with porn and masturbation and I need it. You know, I don't know what to do. And my sisters and my mom, they got up around me and they prayed for me. And they loved me and they poured into me. And I rem- that was, I remember thinking like, I have to do something every single day hmm. to remind myself of who I am. Yeah. It was a complete reset for me. It made yep. it a fair fight. Wow. I'd never had a fair fight. Yeah. That's right. Amazing. Because it started so young. Yep. So then I wore a white t-shirt every day. So guys, this is the reset. Like this is the change of context. I wore a white shirt every day. Yep in high school to remind me of who I was. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a year. Wow. Which was super unpopular, super unfun, but I didn't care. Yeah. My family knew me. I had this, I had this positive peer pressure. Yep. I had this positive accountability where they weren't saying, have you been looking at porn? Are you struggling? They were going, Jay, you are an incredible man. Yeah. And that launched me into this new season. So to me, it's like, guys, add some white t-shirts to your wardrobe, right? And and get guys. So a lot of guys are asking like, how do I find a good community of men? How do I get connected with men? Uh, it's why we created Braveco. Mm-hmm. It's, it's why we do what we do is, so you can join our Foundations of Masculinity yeah. course. You can dive in there. You get really great curriculum, really great teaching. Um, you can join our podcast. If you're listening to this, you're already a part of it. Um, you can jump in and join our YouTube channel. Um, you can also join your local church Yep. and get into a small group, right? It doesn't have to be something brave is doing, get into a small group, yep. a small group of guys who are doing something and be open, be vulnerable, be real. Yeah. You can even, uh, initiate real connection with men, yep. invite them to do something fun. You know, don't call a guy and go, Hey, you want to go to coffee with me? That It's awkward. Like that <laughs> long pause, because here's the thing. What's wrong with coffee? You it's, just don't drink it. That's why you think we shouldn't go to coffee. No, nah, because in the church, here's what we do in the church. We go to coffee and we have this connect and, and 
what happens at coffee and i'm slamming coffee it, i can see that what happens at coffee stays at coffee it knows it's just like there's not enough fun in it mm. there's yeah you're just talking about you your hard things and it's like well how many times does that guy want to come talk about hard things totally do you know what i mean yeah now if you said have coffee and a cigar maybe yeah like maybe that's enough i don't even drink cigars but my friends who do yeah nobody drinks cigars actually some, I've never seen anybody does. drink a cigar, cigars, but <laughs> my friends who smoke cigars, they get together, you know, they're like, man, when can we get together again to smoke a cigar? It, it, maybe there's enough fun in it, but here's actually what I think. Like do something fun with a guy. Yeah, that's great. Build a bond, build a connection. It's really hard to build a like bond. Go to a baseball game, go to a baseball game, Boom. Um, go hiking together yeah. and actually build a real relationship. Then if coffee's a part of it, great. But it's really hard to build a bond over coffee. What if the coffee's really good? I'm just saying, like, it's really hard to build a bond over, you know, you're trying to build a bond with guys. Yeah, because fun, fun is a big part of building a relationship. It is. Yeah. Fun, adventure. you got to position yourself not just for all the serious, heavy moments. No, but competition. Yeah, like all that stuff. Build a bond, and and you're, you'd be well on your way. Cole, is there anything that we missed or that we need to hit? Before we close this up, I'm sure that we missed some things and that we'll get an email or a comment yeah. about it. Uh, but nothing that comes to mind. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I th I guess the last thing I would just say to men is it's winnable. Mm -hmm. You know, the lie that you've believed that it can't be done, it can't yeah. be win won is not true. Um, our brains are plastic, which doesn't mean hard plastic, but the plasticity of our brain. Our brain is actually really powerful to readapt yeah. no matter how old we are. You used yeah. to think that the older you got, you couldn't do it. Yeah. It is true, the older you are, the harder it is, but it's still very, very, very possible. Yeah. Uh, and then when you add in deep relationships with other men, you add in the power of God who's gonna help yeah. you. He wants you to win. Your dad wants you to win more than anybody else. Yeah. He wants you to win. God wants us to win more than we want ourselves to win sometimes, right? And so uh, just know this is a winnable fight. It and is. so if, if, if your first step from this podcast is to shift your mindset and fill yourself with hope and faith that you know you can do it, that's step number one. Yeah, I'll throw in a couple more um, resources. And if you know that you're addicted to porn and you're really struggling, and you, f you fought it for a long time, um, <clears throat> the our Transformation Center, which we can put a link yep. to that, we have a um, addiction program for men that's really successful. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, men who have been struggling, go through it and get yep. really, really well. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, also I would say if your marriage is struggling because of it, um, go see a counselor. Yeah, absolutely. Invest, you know, invest counseling is invest huge. your finances, your time, your effort, your energy. If you know that you have an addiction, don't just try and beat it on your own. Yeah. Get some <clears throat> professional help, jump in and invest in getting well. So, um, Cole, would you pray for us? I don't yeah. always do this, but I just want to do this after. Yeah, after let's this. pray. Man, Lord, I thank you that you, you created us and that mm. you put us together and you knit us together the way that you did. Uh, the complexity of the way our brains and our biology and our minds work and the ability we have to adapt and to shift and to... Um, have just a neuroplastic the, the neuroplasticity of our brain is so incredibly exciting and intriguing mm -hmm. because no matter it means no matter how far we've fallen we can climb back up yep. and I thank you for that truth I pray that you would just deposit faith in any man that is listening that has lost hope that has lost faith in their ability to fight that you would right now even in this moment fill them with faith father Fill them with a belief that victory can be mm -hmm. theirs. I pray that anybody that has memories, images, old thoughts, pictures that they've seen, situations or scenarios they've been in, that they have these memories that they can't get rid of, that they that their brain grabs onto at different points mm -hmm. in the day, or maybe they have these dreams that are based on memories of past experiences. Father, would you do a mental miracle right now, renew their minds, eradicate these old images, completely wipe these old memories and images out of their mind 
so that they would be able to start new and fresh, that they would be able to build new habits? Would you do years worth of counseling in a moment right now? Yeah. Completely wipe clean through a mental miracle their thought life. Hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Cole, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. And guys, let's fight the good fight. Stay brave out there. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to the Brave Co. Podcast. If you like this podcast, would you please rate it, review it, leave us a great comment. And if you like this episode in particular, share it with your friends and family. That helps us to spread the word. Guys, stay brave. We'll see you next week.